Welcome to our show. Today we review the First Minister's questions from Holyrood. My guests are Mr. Phil Attridge, politician, former, former councillor in the City of Edinburgh and a member of the Labour Party, and Mr. Norman Stewart, political blogger and cartoonist. My name is Stuart Lockhead. I'm a freelance journalist and broadcaster. In the aftermath of some fairly uh, interesting days, ever since it was a Sunday morning that uh, Prime Minister Cameron went on to the Andrew Marr show to announce that uh, the London politicians were going to take over Scotland's referendum on independence. And uh, the First Minister's questions, it uh, normally starts with the Leader of the Opposition asking a, 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 a an inane question, what are your appointments for the day? Unfortunately for the, the new, wonderfully good looking leader of the Labour Party in Scotland, Joanne <laughs> Lamont, <laughs> Lamont as she's called down south with the, the, the London commentators, uh, she forgot to switch on her microphone, so she had a rather bad start to today's FMQs. And given that I believe there was a lot of um, interest globally, in today's first minister's questions, that won't go down, rather, won't down very well. Let's start with uh, Norrie. What were your impressions of today's first minister's questions? Well, um, Joanna, uh, forgetting to put her card in to activate her mic, was not exactly getting off on the right foot, and quite worrying because if she's not used to cards, she won't be able to understand the uh, Tory economic analogies. You know, I mean, households and debt and whatnot. <coughs> yeah, she's got to stick her ID card into a slot before yeah. her mic will work, which she didn't do. But she didn't, I mean, she, she opened with fairly predictable stuff, you know, confidence in, in, the, uh, in the setup of the referendum, in the procedure of the referendum, which is really what's all been talked about. Uh, Michael Moore's consist, uh, consultancy document is now available. So you study that? I had, I had a good look at it yesterday, and essentially it's all being predicted. Okay. You know, did, did, they back, did they backtrack on what was said on, on some Sunday? Because they were going to. They what did, they, force they, they, wore, they wore it down. I mean, what, what they appeared to want was to be able to dictate the date. Well, in fact, there's three asterisks where the date should be in the consultancy document. So they haven't put a date of their own in. Mm. Um, and with Salmond announcing autumn 2014 as the SNP preferred date, whilst Michael Moore he was standing on his feet in Parliament, it kind he of was there. Yes, it did spoil things rather for them. It seems to have been quite a good idea. I think it's worth saying that today's first minutes of questions followed um, a full debate this morning in the Holyrood Chamber on the issue of the referendum and. Um, Basically, the Labour Party were saying um, we want to do it the same way as the Tories, and so they lined up beside the Tories and the uh, Lib Dems in the Holyrood Chamber this morning and had a go at the SNP, and the SNP had a stood on their ground. But so there was a background to today's first minister questions. In, in today's FMQs, it seemed to me that Alex Salmond was responding to Joanne Lamont. Joanne Lamont was predictably oppositional. Oppositional. Just stating the, the Unionist Party's position on the referendum, and Alex Hammond had, I believe, wrong footed them, not only with his usual personality and charisma, he kept referring to the consultation document, which will be published in only like in 10 days, which everybody will be entitled to take part of in the whole of Scotland, he said. Uh, the the, <laughs> the Labour Party were complaining during the debate this morning at some point that. Um, they weren't mentioned in this consultation document that's, or the, the discussion, you know. Yeah, it what, seemed, it seemed more But the whole of Scotland was mentioned. It seemed more important to um, Joanne that she was named in the consultation document. I mean, does she want a paragraph that says, you know, we will specifically speak to the Labour Party. Labour Party, or don't the Labour Party in Scotland believe they're part of the Scottish was it, community? Was it you that mentioned 
when we were watching this person asked this question, it's not if you mentioned the national conversation of somebody else. Because, we, of course, this was... <laughs> don't, don't forget, it's been very low profile, but the SNP have been running a national conversation about uh, yeah, independence but, yeah, for years, which all the unions parties have totally ignored. Because they had Kalman. But now they've got this consultation document will be probably be presented to the SNP as simply an extension of the national conversation. Well, I, I would think so. And your, your other problem for me today was nobody, as usual, pinned him down. I mean, the, the Labour Party, who are the next biggest party in the Scottish Parliament, do not want what the SNP want. They want what the Conservatives want. These are these strings attached to the referendum. What they want is a date as soon as possible. They don't want the 16 to 18 year olds to vote. You know, so essentially they want exactly what the Tories want, and that's going to be a huge problem for them. Huge because problem for an awful lot of Labour Labour Party members in Scotland. Well, I know a lot of Labour Party members do have problems. With that, fun enough, um, stand side we, by side with the toxic Tories. The vast majority of actually come from South, uh, people that have the problems. There are. Scots within it, but there's an awful lot of people up here like come from south of the border, like I've been, been up here for 40 years, this is my home, um, but we have problems in the way that particularly Scottish members of the Scottish Labour Party, you see them in the party, that, that it's almost like, oh, it's patronising, I hate to use a word from a long time ago, but it's this whole idea, it's that Britishness, they're more British than they are Scots, they have more allegiance to Westminster, what Westminster want, what they want as this um, entity of 60 million people is far more important than what the 5 million people up here as a nation want. Um, and they do everything they can to undermine it. Whatever Salmon says, they will never go along because they're not interested in knowing. They're not interested in agreeing with Salmon. And Salmon's actually, yeah, he's, he's a wily individual, very, I mean, has all this worked out. Um, and they call him all sorts of name, personalization and everything else. Wiley Coyote. Wiley Coyote, what, what, whatever you do. Road Runner will come running into view any He's minute now. very upfront. You, you, you had this consultation paper with, with the whole thing's going. Um, that's what they're there for. But it's this, well, you've seen it in, 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 in Westminster. I mean, I mean, I mean, it really makes you, was it this good Scottish expression? It really gives you the dry boat. In fact, it really has to throw up watching Miliband in bed with those slimy individuals. Sorry, I'm old Labour. Those people on the other side just want to screw me and everybody in Scotland particularly to the wall. You know, um, Okay, I think, fair I think, enough. I think you made your point fairly clear there, uh, Phil. I think I have to take issue with your metaphor, Wiley Coyote and uh, Roadrunner. <laughs> I think maybe uh, Salmon would be Roadrunner. It's Wiley Coyote that keeps getting the lumps of lead. That's true. That's true. <laughs> well, look, can I just yeah, the road rubber gets away. Yeah. yeah. The, um, I'm just looking at the, the same point to, mo to, to note uh, on, on the overall FNQs. Really, any leader of the Lib Dems didn't get us a question. Was there a single question from a Liberal Democrat? I don't think so, but we can fact check. Everybody does yeah. these yeah. days, but we don't think. But certainly, it must, they must have been feeling really cheesed off, because if one, one FMQs in three that the Lib Dems don't get a question, because they don't have, they've only got five MSPs, and if they give them every time, then the Greens would have to get a question every FMQ, so that was noticeable. Uh, so far, none of us, if you've noticed, we've been going ten minutes and nobody's mentioned Ruth Davidson yet. How did she, how, let's have a, how did she perform? Nori, what did you think? I, I thought she, I thought she did the smartest thing that she could, she went for one question, which is a bit shaky, and the Electoral Commission, why don't you trust them, Mr. Salmon? That's right. Oh, I'm not going to criticise them, said uh, Wiek, I'll leave that to uh, the Scottish Trade Union Council. Yeah, exactly. So apparently, yes, he, he referred to him. She was, she seemed to have, uh, the, the first minister's official spokesperson had said something, which was reported in a regional newspaper, the Press and General, uh, in Aberdeen. It didn't seem to be the most, the strongest of evidence to pin Salmon down. So he slipped out of it, of course, with this, this, this reference to the STUC leader. But this, this is a political party leader that seems to be under the, um, under the impression that this country has been suffering from decades of socialism and now we are getting it real, you know, where people are getting this something for nothing society. Uh, but I don't know where she's been living, maybe in her nice little comfy 
kind of, you know, well, barber have, kind of world. Um, that they, is what they have always been. Well, these people have always been getting something true. for nothing. They've been getting what belongs to us and the ordinary working people. But there are in no, this country. There, don't, there don't appear to be any. What was it whole system? No whole. What, what was it? Like these Tories that, that there used to be an expression. That's that, society. Well, no, way back to twenty. 20, 30 years ago, Ted Heath was a, a kind oh, of one nation. one nation Toryism. That seems to have gone. I mean, I follow quite a few Tories on Twitter, and uh, they are the, the Scottish Tories that, uh, that that shout the loudest on Twitter. They're as extreme as the rest of them down in, in, in England. And I don't. They must no. all just talk to each other. But These are the people that gave you to England in the first place. Yeah, but that that's part of why the Tories have no mandate in Scotland. No. Because one nation Toryism was what thought Tories in Scotland were a okay. And that's what they voted for you when, know, they gave, the when, they, when they gave when they gave the Tories more than fifty percent of the vote back in the fifties. It's more pandas in Scotland than Tories. <laughs> and it's no, I mean that's gone now. So but what's the general feeling about Ruth Davidson? I mean out of five, well, what did she get? How many stars did she get? But, but she gets a three, but Joanna gets yeah. a two. Oh yeah, too. But also when she was going about the the electoral commission, um, and then it did came up um, that date. Remember, in 1979. Um, sorry, Salmon is playing safe. They're not going to get to use it. They're not going to get shafted by these unionists um, again. Um, and they're going about Salmon being wily and slimy and all the rest of it. I'm sorry, there's nothing as slimy as a uh, uh, British empirical unionist. Uh, I'm sorry, they'll 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 do their granny in to get what they Okay, get. so you reckon, I think you're right, I agree with you on the question of the electric commission, she kind of banged on about that a bit, and then, um, but uh, as you're right, it came back with the, the 79 election being rigged mm. with that 40%, mm -hmm. and it meant that basically the dead had voted no, yes. the 40% minimum um, turnout, I think. Let's not go into details of that. Uh, back to jo uh, Joanne Lamont, or Joanna, or Lam Joanna Lamont, Joanne. depending on who you are. I think she's a Lamont. She, 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 Joanne Lamont. I know she's a Lamont. She suffers from a, a number of disadvantages. One of them is this Johan, John, Johanna. I've got a daughter called Johanna well, with an A in it. Yeah, has got an A in the end. And the question, of course, Lamont. Lamont, she said, that's a um, problem. Tories call it Lamont, her, as in Norman, her, um, everybody else, it, it, a Scots person calls her, it Lamont. Her parents might go down well in Pollock, but it doesn't go down too well in London. Well, actually, what appearances really, uh, to my mind, have nothing okay. to do with it. But, it's but, but, they, to, they, but they do. But it, and it is noticeable but that they do. two yeah. years ago, she used to she used a much broader Glasgow accent than she has lately, now, ever since she's been leader. So. Uh, she can now be understood, which was, you know. Uh, what I noticed today was that Salmond didn't get the boots in. Now, I'm wondering if that's got something to do with uh, Joanne. Is, is it a case that she's a good street fighter? Does she like a, a, a nice toe to toe boxing match? And uh, Salmond isn't going to give her the opportunity? He doesn't have to do it, that's the whole point. I mean, there was n no triumphal triumphalism that I could see, apart from when a fellow SNP asked him um, about the date for the referendum, and he came back with a big smile and a resounding yes. Oh, the Joe Fitzpatrick one. That but question no was taken point, before all this, before Sunday. But at no point today did he strut. You know, I mean, he kept it very statesmanlike. As Phil said earlier, he could have had the fire and the two saltires furled neatly to either side of it behind him today. Very presidential, very grown up politician. So what about his uh, body language reference? For that was, to, of course, with the, it seemed to me that there was a definite tactic in today's, and it's not just today, it is to paint, is to, to make it very difficult for Labour Party members because they are now standing side by side, shoulder to shoulder, with the toxic Tories. Oh, yeah. And that would appear to be the tactic. Well, the, the, there was two sets of body language there. I mean, that I noticed. Uh, I mean, the, the types in the Labour Party, I mean, which are pretty indistinguishable, um, they were actually having a go at Miliband from the, from the Tories, but it was the squirming on the benches. Of, you, know, uh, you, you had mentioned that before, right? you know, the squirming coming from it. Um, 
I just think it's uh, he's hit it spot on. You know, the, this unifying. Well, that's the whole point of the uni unionists, I suppose. But all the dirty tricks all come out of the basket with this one. No two ways about it. So um, the, the SNP tactic. I mean, um, Alex Salmond mentioned child poverty, nuclear weapons, you'll never get rid of them with the Tory government in Westminster. Well, unless you have independence, and yet it's supposed to be a lot of, a lot of most. Is it a majority thing in the Scottish Labour Party, or is it, are you now in favour of um, nuclear weapons? Well, if you looked at Bomber Bailey, oh, sorry, uh, Jackie Bailey, um, but then I might have been a certain constituency where no, they are. What's the official really, position? Well, they, they don't really have any. You're they're, a member of the party. Don't ask me, just because I've been a member of that way. But <laughs> you, don't ask me, it's what comes up their hump this week. The Debo Max issue is another, is, is regarded as a rat trap. It's, the, the commentators are saying it's a rat trap. Um, but the, the, Alex Simon's answer seems to be referring to the Civic Scotland plan, which is that the Scottish Council for Voluntary Organisations, the STUC, um, was a third public civic body, they've all come out and said, like, we want Devo Max. It's their way in. I mean, it, it's this is Salmon's response. If the response to the that. consultation is overwhelmingly for Devo Max, it's going to be very difficult for Westminster to refuse the Scottish people the democratic opportunity to vote on that. Now, whether it means two referendums. But, well, I, 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 is that based on, you're, asking, you're looking quizzically at that. People don't seem to know what Devo Max could, could mean. It is actually very simple. The Isle of Man, Jersey, yeah. Guernsey, they all have Devo Max. Yeah, they, 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 you, it, it's simple, that's how it's done. And if, if you have a look at it, and, and apart from that, when they've had polls, intensive polls and everything else, something like 68%, 68%, way over a constitutional majority, uh, believe and are quite looking at, at it. Uh, I, I do know yeah. MSPs uh, in the Labour Party uh, are looking at Devo Max. But, but, let's be fair. Let, but let's be fair, unless it's clearly defined, you can't be certain the pollsters would say you can't be certain what these people that said yes to Diva Max meant. Still sounds like a majority Stuart. What, what did they understand as Diva Max to be? Have the argument for independence won or lose. Diva Max will be defined as everything you want to have control of and nothing that's a difficult question. So in other words, what, what, what they'll argue for is everything. Can I ask you just to define who's they? I would, say, I, I would say if it comes to Devo Max, Who's it? it will be Labour Party and SNP. Mm -hmm. I think the Labour Party will eventually go through so much hell with this. I mean, it's quite likely if, if the SNP make a job of it, Liberals are gone, Tories are gone, the Labour Party are in danger of being classed with the Tories. Well, that's what's happened. A lot of that. No, by I'm talking the Scottish population are going to are going to come to that. Well, it's a camp, the Scottish population. You have to agree with it. Generally speaking, Diva Max seems to be very popular. Mm -hmm. And if it's if it's left to Civic Scotland and the SNP to define Diva Max, where does that leave the Labour Party? Well, I, I wouldn't mention anybody's name without asking them. But I do know that there are elected representatives. You'd be very surprised at who some of them are. Well, if, they don't, if they don't get the Scotland bill right, they're quite ha there's a good likelihood they could even go um, and, and, and vote, vote for independence. There's an awful lot of people want a Scottish Labour Party. They want a Labour Party. You have these Blairites still down there. I mean, this whole idea. I mean, they've got nothing to do with Labour. It's not old Labour. I mean, it's just bog standard social democracy. You know, looking after your own people. That's all you're looking for. Um, and you're not going to get that. In England or south of the border appears to have a, a complete uh, inbuilt Tory majority. And with the gerrymandering that this Westminster government's going to do with the boundaries, it'll make it even more. They're, they're looking now to whack up 25% of the Welsh seats as well to make it even more. You're probably right there. Now look, there's a couple of quotes that we don't want to miss out in today's show. Mm. Um, the Bashir Ahmed one. Can, can somebody put that into context and then, and then let's hear it? I th Sorry? Effectively it, it was underlining the inclusive goal that the, the SNP seem to have. Um, and Bashir Ahmed basically said it doesn't matter 
where you've come from is where we're all going together. Now this is a, a reference to the idea that uh, all kinds of people want a vote that don't live in Scotland, I believe. I'm not sure how it managed to come up in today's FMQs. Joe Fitzpatrick, perhaps. Um, he was, um, this Joe Fitzpatrick, an SNP backbencher, had already, already put, put forward a question for today's pro, uh, First Minister's questions uh, last week before anything, before the, let's say, the David Cameron announcement on Sunday. And it was turned into a, just a, an excuse for Simon to say, yes, I agree with whatever you said. But uh, Joe Patrick also had a prepared speech, which I, I think I'm going to dig out, and, because it, it must have been written by the, the boss. Yeah, I mean, it must have been written by the, 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 the spinners. And, that and, and it was the reaction to that that the Bashir Ahmed quote was brought in. Also as well, I mean, if you've been, been following it, there are moves that expatriate Scots that li live um, south of the border um, should have a vote. Um, with, with some of them, I mean the staunch unionists try any kind of tricks. I'm sorry, do you have a Scottish name? Do you live anywhere you like? Do you live in Australia? Do you live in Canada? Don't. If pe people have moved from here to Canada that maybe have dual nationality, they'll be looking for them to get a vote. Um, they'll be doing all well, sorts that, of things. So that, so that, that that's why the, that's where it's coming. That's where the Bashir Ahmed quotes come in. I live here, you get a vote. You don't no, live here, you don't get a vote. No, hard argument for them to make because they've essentially said they want to play it by the rules of the normal um, parliamentary elections. So in effect, if you've got, if you're on the electoral roll, you get a vote. The the real one, yeah. the, the real one with the question is Scots and the armed forces not living in Scotland because the armed forces get a posted vote wherever they are. Yes, and quite right too. Well, that's fair enough. I can't see Salmon disagreeing to allowing people whose last residence before they joined the army or whatever. Um, who are in the armed forces get a vote. I mean, to me, that would only be common sense and deserve a vote. And given the propensity for the Scots to go out fighting all the British wars everywhere else, that's an awful lot of votes. Um, mm -hmm. And cool. I would think, demographically, that they would probably be... They would cancel each other out. I would imagine there'd be a lot of young squaddies out there who will vote. You know, what, 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 what's, what's, what's the modern expression? K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, stupid. I mean, especially for something like this. As I say, when it comes to defining Devo Max, the, the clever way to do that is you start off with independence and then you, 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 you look for what will, not be, what will not be included in full independence in, in a Devo Max solution. So you keep it simple that way. There's one more quote that we cannot, not, we cannot miss out on today's show. And the context, I need help on the context. This is the one about... Um, a Labour leader at Westminster, Salmon came out with this, it was well prepared. He was talking about, um, I'll, I'll make the quote and then you can fill it in guys. A Labour leader at Westminster who gets a response from a Prime Minister saying he's 100% in agreement, probably has a reasonably short time frame left in his time in office. Now that will be in all tomorrow's papers. And that's, Down south. And that's the Labour nightmare. There, because Miliband has had a dreadful few days. Oh yeah, I mean he has all the playwrights um, having a go at him. I mean he said they all come out of the woodwork the minute anything happens. Um, and even though they probably, the playwrights, will agree with Cameron, they're, you know, kind of Machiavellian, they'll, they'll use that against him or they'll get other people to brief as well. But How did Simon manage to bring that up? Well, it, it, was, it, it was part of the Le Mans moaning the, the, about inclusiveness in the debate. I mean, she was moaning about Labour Party inclusiveness in the debate. Simon just kept reiterating, civil Scotland will have its say. And you can be part of that debate or not. So it's back to the tactics. Remember this history here. Re remember that the SNP were not involved in Calvin. Remember that the, uh, the big debate that the SNP initiated the Liberal Democrats, Tories, and Labour The National Conversation. The National Conversation. They would have no part of it. So she's going to be worrying that she gets cut out of the loop. Salmond wouldn't be that stupid. Salmond will be as inclusive as necessary from a political point of view. He will look like he's opened this up to everybody because that way nobody complains. Okay, but to come back, I'm winding back more slightly. What it, this quote 
about um, the Labour, about Miliband, effectively, yeah. really is displays the tactic that the SNP are working. They're painting the Tories and the Labour Party shoulder to shoulder, and that doesn't go down well in Scotland. It's, it's, it was an undisguised threat. In, in essence, what he was saying was, you stand with the Tories, we will plaster you with the same merde. You're a toxic Labour Party. Yeah, but there's, there's also the simple fact that... Do, do your Labour Party colleagues realise the danger they're in? Yeah, quite, a, quite, a lot quite, quite a lot probably don't or don't even care because they know there's going to be Labour. Uh, I have a slightly cynical bent, as you can okay. notice. But, 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 no, but, but, there, but there, it's because of his attitude um, that's where they've coming up with the welfare cuts, where, he's, where, where Milliman started to go on about, oh, we're getting real with, with the cuts. I'm sorry, it's really difficult to try and pin the Labour leadership in Westminster down. To, do they actually have an agenda that well, they doesn't flip plot and change they don't seem to be. There just doesn't seem to be an opposition. No, there's no coherence. They're all on the same railway track going down to the buffer, so well, three parties. A, a, question, a, a question that has to be asked is, will Salmond actually end up with any opposition whatsoever? Well, in, in Hollywood. In Hollywood. And at the moment, it doesn't look like it, because Joanne looks to be towing the Westminster Party line. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea of a Scottish Labour Party, which was always difficult for people like with the Labour Party, to take on board as a real thing seems to have become what everybody thought it would. It's business as usual. Mm -hmm. And until she gets up and does something different, that says anything that's different from, from Westminster, oh. nobody's going to believe that it's happening. I don't think anyone's going to listen. Either. I'm glad she never asked asked Sam and the, the Jim Murphy question was uh, with the armed forces, with the navy. How many aircraft carriers is Scotland going to have? I mean, he actually said that. How many aircraft? Well, we know what we know what was um, we know what that was meant to signify to a Glasgow electorate. It's about jobs in the shipyards, which was what it was meant to do, but it came out all wrong. Sorry, now, Jim Murphy might be wants another war <laughs> as well. Now you you <laughs> Philly, you, you wanted to bring up the question of sixteen and seventeen year olds. Sixteen, seventeen. Now, is this a problem? Did, was that was that brought up in today's FMQs? It was brought up in as much as it's one of the strengths that the Westminster yeah. cohort want to attach. To but isn't that, a also, isn't that a Labour Party policy? It's a Liberal Democrat. It's well, very it's much a Liberal Democrat. It's definitely a Liberal vote. Democrat. They, the Labour Party have talked about it, but then again, what's... So what was it you wanted to, you wanted, you wanted to bring well, that in? Well, personally, I don't, I don't have any problem. And I've seen something... You, you know, the, uh, the 16 and 17 year olds are going to... Well, they, they're just as bright. Um, clued up now. Well, it, it, it will be their future, of course. And it is their future. Um, are they going to be in an independent be, Scotland or a, a, I don't know, well, colony? Realistically, it's a red herring. I mean, they're, they're not going to get, they're not going to make a substantial difference to any vote one way or another. Yes, they're two vote, but they do say that, uh, oh yeah, but the majority of the 60th, the 70th, that's where we get the unionists, well, we'll all go along, you know, just maybe they'll play them, they'll all give them a free DVD of Braveheart or something before or something oh, right, like right. that. Um, at the end of the day, um, why not? Why not? Well, as you said, it's their future. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I want to say thank you, gentlemen, for today's sitting down here together again, covering um, FMQs. Look forward to the next show. And FIFA progressive politics, if they can ever, all the progressives can ever actually get themselves together as a unifying force. Progressives. Progressive. That's what they, that's what they call these nasty neocons in America. My goodness, please don't bring dirty words in to a Scottish context, Mr. Atrish. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, we're, we're not in America. Thanks for having us. <laughs>